hey guys my name is Aries. welcome to my youtube channel the Ricky fashion icon so today i made a video on what leather is all about and i've had um, a few people ask me about this a couple of times and i finally made it so yay <laughs> yeah i finally I've, I've finally done it so you're welcome so um you can comment down below what you think and if you would like me to make something like this again it would be really nice because i even learned some things while doing my research i read some other material but i didn't want to go too deep with this video so i just stuck with the basics so i don't sort of just um do out of point so anywho like and subscribe this video comment down below what you think and if you want me to do something like this and I guess I will see you soon. Leather is a durable and flexible material created by tanning animal raw hide and skins. The most common raw material is cattle hide. Leather is used to make a lot of items like footwears, Cassettes, clothes, bags, book bindings, fashion accessories, and furniture. Most leather produced and sold are made from the skins of cattle and calves, but leather is also made from sheep, lambs, goats, and pigs. Other species are hunted and killed specifically for their skins, including zebras, bison, kangaroos, elephants, crocodiles, alligators ostriches, lizards, and snakes. How is leather made? Tanning is the process of treating skins and hides of animals to produce leather. A tannery is a place where the skins are processed into leather. Tanning hide into leather involves a process that permanently alters the protein structure of the skin, making it more durable and less susceptible to decomposition and also possibly coloring it. The type of leather is determined by the type of tanning process used. So we are going to check out the most common types. Number one, vegetable tanned leather. Vegetable tanned leather is tanned using tannins extracted from vegetable matter, such as tree bark prepared in bark mills. It is the oldest known method. It is supple and brown in color and is the exact shade depending on the mix of materials and the color of the skin. The color tan gets its name from the appearance of undyed leather. Vegetable tanned leather is not stable in water. It tends to discolor and if left to soak and then dry, it shrinks and becomes harder, a feature that is perfect for molding leather in making shoes and bags. Historically, it was occasionally used as armor after hardening and has also been used for book binding. Number two, chrome tanned leather. Chrome tanned leather was invented in 1858 and is tanned using chromium sulfide and other chromium salts. It is also known as wet blue for the pale blue color of the undyed leather. The chrome tanning method usually takes approximately one day to complete and is best suited for large-scale industrial use. This is the most common method in modern use. It is more supple and pliable than vegetable tan leather and does not discolor or lose shape as drastically in water and it is relatively cheaper. However, there are environmental concerns with this tanning method as chromium is a heavy metal. A few other types of leathers are chamois leather which is a form of aldehyde tanning that produces a porous and highly water absorbent leather chamois leather is made using marine oils traditionally called oil that oxidize to produce the aldehydes that tan the leather brain tanned leathers brain tanned leathers are made by a labor intensive process that uses emulsified oils often those of animal brains such as deer cattle and buffalo they are known for their exceptional softness and washability alum leather alum leather is transformed using aluminium salts mixed with a variety of binders and protein sources such as flour and egg yolk 
alum leather is not actually tanned rather the process is called thawing and resulting materials revert to rawhide if soaked in water long enough to remove the alum salts grades of leather leather is produced in the following grades top grain leather top grain leather includes the outer layer of the hide known as the grain which features finer more densely packed fibers resulting in strength and durability depending on the thickness it may contain some of the more fibrous layer on the known as corium types of top grain leather include full grain leather which contains the entire grain without any removal of the surface rather than wearing out it develops patina during its useful lifetime and is usually considered the highest quality of leather full grain leather is typically finished with a soluble aniline dye russia leather is a form of full grain leather corrected grain leather corrected grain leather has the surface subjected to finishing treatments to create a more uniform appearance this usually involves buffing or sanding away flaws in the grain then dyeing and embossing the surface newbock leather Newbok is a top grain leather that has been sanded or buffed on the grain side to give a slight nap or short protein fibers producing a velvet like surface. Number two, split leather. Split leather is created from the corium left once the top grain has been separated from the hide, known as the drop split. In thicker hides, the drop split can be further split into a middle split and a flesh split. Bicast leather is a split leather that has a polyurethane or vinyl layer applied to the surface and embossed to give the appearance of a grain. It is slightly stiffer than top grain leather but has a more consistent texture. Patent leather Patent leather is the leather that has been given a high gloss finish by the addition of a coating. Dating to the late 1700s, it has become widely popular after inventor Seth Boyden developed the mass production process using a linseed oil based lacquer in 1818. Modern versions are usually a form of bicast leather. Suede. Suede is made from the underside of a split to create a soft, napped finish. It is often made from younger or smaller animals, as the skins of adults often result in a coarse or shaggy nap. Number three, bonded leather. It is also called reconstituted leather, and it's a material that uses leather scraps that are shredded and bonded together with polyurethane or latex onto a fiber mesh. The amount of leather fibers in a mix vary from 10% to 90% affecting the properties of the product.